Hey everyone, uh, Brandon here from Roost. Welcome to getting started on the Roost platform. Whether you're coming from online or you're in roost.help, we wanna help you guys get started in understanding what is gonna be most important to you on the platform. So first we're gonna look at the menus, then we're gonna take a look at where you'll primarily live as either a builder or as someone who wants to come in and take advantage of some of the out of the box automations. All right, so let's take a look. So at the top, we can see there's a drop down here for the organization that we belong to. So right now I'm in Cluck Queue. Over to the right, we can see that we have a question button here. This brings you to roost.help. You might be there already. If not, this is our documentation site where you can find all of the information that you need as you're building on Roost. We also have the ability to add feedback. We do this through a system called Canny, where if you have any product requests, you have any education requests, documentation requests, you can go ahead and let us know here as well. We have our notification bell and of course our accounts. So this is the top menu. This is where you can get some of that information, get the help you need, add some feedback. All right, now at the bottom right, what we can see here is we have the resource center. So the help hatchery here gives you access to a step-by-step -step onboarding, signing up for our Cluck University trainings or checking out some new announcements. And there will be more available on here depending on the context that you're in on the app. Next, we have the menu on the left. And this is really the bread and butter of where you're gonna be while you're working on the platform. If you're new to the platform and you're just signing up and you're wanting to take advantage of some of those out of the box automations, we have this crate section. Now the crate section gives us access to the crate marketplace and the crate marketplace is where you can find a number of out of the box automations that you can get set up and configured. So for example, we have add client to roost, add roost form link to new user request tickets, et cetera, et cetera. You can sort these, by alphabetical, date created, or maturity. I would recommend maturity personally. And you can see there's a number of things here, including my personal favorite, monitoring Steam for deals on your favorite games. Why not get some uh, value out of the box right away? Am I right? Next, we're gonna go back up here a little bit to the dashboard. So this is uh, where you can see all of your workflows running. So whether you've built any automations or you are using some of our out of the box crates, you can see what's been successful, where the errors are, you can see integrations that need attention, workflow activity, et cetera. One of the most important points on here uh, that I love to point out and I love to see is this time saved. So when you are working on any of your automations, when you're building your workflows, there is a configurable option to add how much time the normal process takes. And this will show you how much time you're saving by running an automation. This is something that you can take to your management. This is something that you can see for your own benefit. Two of the biggest things in Roost that we'd like to talk about is time savings as well as reduction in errors, right? So this is a big one right here. And you should be able to see for your org or any of your sub organizations, any clients that you're running workflows for or anything along those lines. So this is really important. I would check this out and keep an eye on this as you move forward. Next, we have the automation section. Now, for those of you who are coming in and planning to build on your own, if you're gonna take the Cluck University courses and you wanna get the most out of Roost by building up your processes, this is the section for you. This section right here is where you can create workflows, forms, you can check out the results of all of your workflows. And if you have any templates or scripts you wanna run in your automations, you can do that here as well. Now we'll talk more about this later as we actually build out an example and work through how you get started with an automation. Next, let's jump down to configuration. Now configuration is where you can configure all of your integrations and your organization variables. So I'll click on integrations here. We should be able to see all of the integrations that are installed as well as any integrations that you can install like Acronis, Avic, OpenAI, et cetera. For more information about getting these integrations installed, you can check out roost.help and we'll have some other new things coming that will make it even easier for you to install your integrations in the future. All right, next we have the organization variables. All right, you can see I have a secret variable here. Now, fundamentally, this is important for any variables that you want in your particular organization. If there's certain data that will always be true and you wanna reference that variable in your automations without having to hard code anything, you can add organization variables here. Finally, we have our tools and our settings. So for our tools, we have the Jinja editor here. Now, if you're not already familiar with this concept, we have a templating language in Roost called Jinja. If you want the ability to manipulate some of the data for some more advanced automations, Jinja is gonna be the way that you do this. So there is a context section here, as well as an actual Monaco editor that you can use to see how you can manipulate the data. We'll dive into more detail later when we look at Jinja in our Roost 103 training. 
And finally, we have these settings. This is where you can add your users, you can authorize users, you can add any sub organizations or clients that you need to run automations for, tags, feature previews, etc. Now I'm gonna see a little bit more here as an admin, but you should have access to everything you need to configure your organization and get your automations running. That's gonna do it here for this video. Hopefully you found this to be helpful. In the next video, what we're gonna do is take a look at how to think about building your automations. Where do you get started? So I'll see you all in the next one.